I sent my presentation to Christina. It is um, updated now. So, hello everyone. Okay, okay. Wait a second for Christina. We are uploading the introductory presentation and then I'll leave the floor. Thank you so much, Christina, because I changed it. So let me know when you want me to start. Okay. Okay, so thank you all for being here. We are starting this uh, Eden Nav um, webinar series today. And I just wanted to introduce uh, the Eden Nav Network of Academics and Professionals, uh, which is um, a group, uh, I would say, a community uh, in the community um, of Eden, European Distance and the Learning uh, Network. Uh, my name is Antonella Poce and I chair the steering committee within the Eden uh, NAP uh, group. Uh, what is NAP? I think it's important to make this uh, short introduction. Uh, network of academics and professionals. Uh, it is a network that within the association supports networking of individual members. Um, it uh, supports communication, interaction among uh, uh, professionals and academics uh, interested in distance education as a wide concept. Uh, it is coordinated of of course, by a steering committee uh, that uh, I, I chair, as I, I told you. Um, we, we work on providing uh, information for professional actions. Uh, we, we help, uh, and we wish we could help more, actually, members to create a personal portfolio. We promote communication, as we said, and we also have help uh, uh, finding partners within um, uh, our membership, the Eden uh, membership. Uh, this is uh, uh, the group, uh, so that you can add also faces to the names of uh, the people you might find um, online on the Eden website, but also on social media. Uh, Alfredo Soero, Elba Turner, Elga Dorner, Wendy Chawi, Don Alcott, uh, Elspeth Korgard Sorensen, Alice Grillman are all uh, members of the NAP Steering Committee and we all work together to uh, support uh, um, communication and interaction uh, among um, the group. Here you have also uh, the website, the, the link to the website area where uh, you can interact with members, uh, get uh, you know, information about other uh, colleagues uh, and join uh, the community. Um, which sort of services and benefits uh, the membership uh, could get in being part of the NAP? Um, group, of course, being part of the community, uh, access uh, you know this this database of uh, uh, institution and individual members and partners. Uh, as a member institution, you can delegate up to thirty uh, individuals uh, in in the NAP. Mm, you can attend the conferences with uh, a, a slightly reduced fee. 
uh, establishing partnership, uh, get access to the proceedings, uh, use uh, uh, Eden logo, um, you know, having relevant newsletters, uh, um, uh, access, uh, uh, and of course, have the possibility to access with a uh, uh, discounted price to uh, our public publications. Um, again, this is a slide that shows you, uh, you know, how to access and what is uh, uh, present on NAP members area. Uh, saying that, uh, of course, we work, uh, as I said, from a communication uh, point of view, so we support and we try to use social media to improve such an interaction, as you can see through Eden charts and webinars, like today. We support professional development, we improve, uh, we try and we wish we could improve uh, uh, more and more our website. And we uh, start and we promote webinars of common uh, interest. We try to listen uh, to our members' uh, ideas and uh, so uh, that to support uh, the interaction I was mentioning in order to promote new projects, new possibilities uh, uh, for research. Here you have some, uh, info, some links to, to our uh, channels, communication channels. And uh, um, as I was saying, today we, uh, we start this webinar series and today we start with uh, um, very, um, very important, I would say, uh, I'm sorry, I'm missing one of my slides, I don't know why. Uh, anyway, we are starting with a very uh, interesting and relevant uh, contribution from our uh, colleagues uh, from, uh, from Vives. Uh, the uh, organization will, will, is promoting actually and will be the, the, the place where we are going to have our annual conference in June, so this is a way to support you uh, partic in participating in our annual conference in June in, in Bruges. Uh, I will give you just uh, a brief uh, introduction related to our hosts today, um, just a few, a few words related to their, uh, to their uh, background. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, evaluation, and which is a, a um, really central issue uh, in distance education uh, programs. Uh, and they have been working, both of them, on technology in education for uh, a good time now. But anyway, uh, let me introduce you, Andrew Cook. I don't know if I pronounced correctly your name, but uh, maybe you can, <laughs> you can support me later. Uh, so he started at Vives as a lecturer in mathematics in 2004 in teacher training for the bachelor primary education program. Besides teaching, he's also an educational technologist to support teachers in the use of educational technology in their teaching practice. Is currently part of the Vives Educational Technology Team, uh, part of the Department of uh, Educational Policy, which gives concrete form to the vision on educational technology for the entire University of Applied Sciences. From the latter position, he started to specialize himself more and more in digital tools, including specifically the Edumatic Assessment Tool, which has now become assessment. assessment. Assessment Q. Uh, Cohen Verlust is working at Vives since 2000, yes. originally as a teacher ICT and multimedia in teacher training for the Bachelor Primary Education Program. Uh, he has been working at the Education Policy Department since 2014. 
the goal in 2014 was to increase the flexibility for distance learning students by establishing the examination center together with the development of Square and implementing Proctor exam as a tool for remote examinations. His role in this, in this was mainly to design and develop the Square tool. Today, he is responsible for the management uh, of Square in addition to the management of a number of other tools. So, uh, I thank you both for being here with, here with us today and I leave you the floor for your presentation. I hope participants can write down their questions or comments in the chat area so that in the end, if we have questions, we can um, ask them to you and see, uh, you know, and support the interaction we are looking for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Antonella. Um, I don't know if it's possible to change to uh, the PowerPoint that we have uh, uh, given uh, right now. Okay, thank you very much. So, hi, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Hendrik Koeke. It was almost pronounced uh, correct. And this is my colleague, Koen Verhulst. So, as you said, uh, we are both member of um, um, of uh, educational policy department in Viva since 2014, and especially in uh, distance education, uh, we work together uh, and use some uh, specific tools. Today, uh, we want to talk about evaluation in distance education, and uh, as you may uh, be able to see, but we only have six slides because we want to show the tools themselves with some examples uh, and how we work with those tools in Vives. Um, first of all, before we do that, I would, I would like to uh, make a short introduction about how uh, distance education in Vives has developed. Actually, we uh, started over 20 years ago in uh, 1997 with the first form of distance education in Belgium. We were pioneer uh, with Vives on that. And it was actually for about seven students who wanted to become a teacher uh, in primary school. So um, the difference uh, with the other students from uh, 18, 19 or 20 years old was that uh, those students were older. They actually uh, had a job yet. They actually uh, got a family uh, and they live, uh, they live far away from um, the, the town where the courses are normally given. And in Belgium, 50 kilometers is very far. So uh, we wanted to uh, look for other tools, other ways of organization uh, for those students because they, uh, they can't be uh, guided in the same way as other students are uh, in day program. Now today, over 20 years later, uh, we have about 30 uh, programs in distance education. They're divided over five study areas as healthcare, applied social, uh, social studies and education and so on. And that uh, sets a counter at about 2,300 students. And that's quite a big uh, part of our student population. Uh, as you see, about 15% <coughs> of the total Viva student population um, follows uh, any course uh, by distance education. So for those students, we want to think about uh, the organization in general, the tools we, uh, we use to uh, give courses, the tools we use to organize assignments, and of course, evaluation uh, as the focus for today. Um, so there were some things in um, during uh, the growth of fevers on distance education, some problems that we still uh, have. And the one is that in a lot of uh, courses, students who follow a distance education program are still expected to get through the campus town uh, at some fixed times, for instance, to take exams. Because in day programs, mm. sometimes in January, in January, you get two moments that a student can take an exam. Mm. But students who want to study uh, with distance education, uh, why can't we uh, let them uh, choose a date as they like? Mm. So if they want to come next Thursday morning and uh, take a, a specific exam, then why can't we give the opportunity to the student? Why can't we give that? So that's one uh, goal that we had or problem that we had and that we try to solve. And the second, um, when a student uh, lives 
100 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 200, even abroad, because we have some students who live abroad. Um, can't we be able to uh, let them take the exam uh, remotely? So uh, when they stay at home and uh, they take the exam. As a fact, uh, about 10, 12 years ago, uh, we started um, exp experiencing with that. I don't know if it's uh, said rightly, but uh, and we used this to Adobe Connect where we are right now. But we, uh, we, we started uh, looking for other tools and so on. So today uh, we want to show some tools um, that actually helped in the organization of the evaluation uh, for distance uh, learning students. But um, in about, I guess, 20 minutes, I'll show the tool, the assessment tool that we use uh, to organize that. But first of all, I want to uh, give um, uh, Kun uh, the, uh, the possibility to uh, say <coughs> something about uh, Square and the examination center that we uh, have here in Vives. Thank you. We will actually change uh, the, uh, the image because we have to share our screen. Uh, so I go to this environment. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Can everyone see this? Yes, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, so now I will take you to Square. This is um, obviously uh, right now it's in, in Dutch, but I can change this into English if we want. And then I will have to log on uh, there. Okay, so uh, Square was, uh, we started developing Square um, in the year 2014 15. Um, and uh, as Hendrik has been, has been saying, uh, we wanted to, to, to gain flexibility, and uh, we had the, the assignment to start up an examination center. Um, Vivis counts uh, several campuses and uh, on each campus before 2014 we had um, some uh, programs that uh, that offered distance learning uh, but of course each campus, each city from uh, Vivis had to um, um, organize exa examination moments which was uh, quite uh, a lot of work and um, so we've started up a uh, uh, an examination center uh, here in uh, Vives Kortrijk where we um, put all the, the students that follow distance learning together. I hope um, I'm being clear but I'll show you um, the view of a student that'll make it um, somehow more understandable I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the profile in Square in our software. There we go. So if a student logs in into Square, this is what he gets to see. Um, it's quite easy, there aren't a lot of buttons, we've made it uh, according to the, the, the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid, so uh, it's not very hard to, to learn to work with Square. Uh, a student has one main button he can click on, and that shows him the program of all the courses that he is taking. Uh, of course, this is our test student, so there's only one course that uh, has been sh that is uh, been show that that is shown. I'm sorry, and uh, within that course we see all the assignments and all the exams uh, the student has to take um, for this course. So, for instance, we see here an example of a, a written exam, uh, a digital exam, two oral exams, one and two, and then we have three assignments uh, that the student has to has to uh, upload, has to deliver um, in Square. We can also see immediately that um, there is some feedback. Apparently, assignment one has been uh, delivered uh, and uh, it's been um, evaluated by the, the teacher of, uh, of that assignment. And so the student doesn't get to see his actual score, but he sees a letter. And if he hovers over it, he can see what that letter stands for. So in this case, in this example, our student hasn't done his work quite well. He scores a seven 
0.49 on 20 or less. Um, so that's not so very good of the student. If we open this assignment, um, I still see as a student what the assignment was, what I have uh, uploaded, and just underneath that, I can see um, uh, the the comments, the the, the feedback, the written feedback that I've gotten from uh, my teacher, um, if he has uh, given any. So I'll return to the written exam. Um, a student can subscribe for an exam uh, or unsubscribe for an exam up to uh, five uh, calendar days before the exam moment itself. So what I'm going to do to show you, I'll unsubscribe in this case. And then, being that same student, I can uh, start uh, subscribing for my written exam. The written exam. Um, I have two buttons. The first button shows me when the exam uh, can be taken. So you see, in this case, there are uh, a lot of uh, dates and, and, and times. Uh, we have two categories. You'll see it if I get back. So this can be taken in the examination center, or this can be taken remotely. Yeah, I'll get back and I'll make my subscription once again. There we go. I'll make my subscription and um, let me say I'm not going to, to take the, the exam on distance remotely. I'll take it in the examination center. So I'll click that and then I can really subscribe. If I click on this button, um, I get to see when this exam is being organized. So you see there are a lot of moments uh, in this example. Um, this is a, a choice that uh, the, the, the teacher or the curriculum responsible is going to make. How many moments are we going to open up for our students to take the exam? So uh, in this case, being the student, uh, I would like to take my exam on the 30th of March. And so I click uh, a green block. Everything that is green is clickable, is uh, usable for me. And so right now I can see I've registered, I've subscribed for my exam on the 30th of uh, March 9.30. Um, what happens at this time is that I uh, get um, an email confirming my subscription so I can be sure that I, um, I'm being well registered. And if I get out of the view of the student right now, I will show you or I'll try to show you our exam room, the examination center. And I'll open um, uh, one date here, let's say, for instance, the 19th of January. This is a Saturday as well. So um, I'll zoom out a little bit. This is the, the whole room, the whole examination room. And so what we see is that all the red Chairs have been taken, our uh, students that have been uh, registering to take one of their exams. We also see some blue chairs right here. Those students have special uh, facilities to take their exam. For instance, they uh, have the right to work um, 20 minutes longer on their exam. Um, that can be something or they can use a certain type of software to uh, to help them take the exam if uh, they, they want to. The red chairs in the back the orange uh, seating places are uh, reserved for digital exams. Those uh, seats have a, a computer, uh, so there they can take a digital exam. And here, once again, we have another color, purple. That shows us that this is a, an exam that will be taken on uh, Edumatic or Assessment queue, as we, we call it nowadays. Um, this will be explained and, and demoed uh, by Hendrik uh, within a few minutes. Um, what I wanted to show here, so if I open a certain... Uh, seating place. We will be able to see, it takes uh, a little time, that this student uh, has um, a certain chair that has been uh, given her. We see what exam she comes to take, what version of exam she's going to take, how long the exam can take maximum, uh, so she can work for three hours. And what's, um, what's uh, very important in Square is that um, the software itself will be placing the students. So uh, if I'm a student and I register for course A, exam mathematics, let's say, and the square places me on uh, the seat I-10, well, next to me, right before me, right behind me, no one can take place 
will be placed there who takes the same exam. So that is something uh, that's, uh, that's uh, a part of uh, the intelligence that's built in in Square to uh, help us uh, make sure that the exams, the examinations, will, uh, will work uh, without uh, any possibility to, to, to fraud the, the exam. So that's quite important. Um, next to that, we have um, a clock that we can uh, set, but of course, this is a date that's in the past. Uh, the two people that um, are responsible for this examination room can uh, start the exam time, and uh, so Square will help them to say, okay, we, we've been working for one hour and a half, uh, the seats G13, E12, and C11 have to hand in their exam because they only can work for one hour and a half uh, on their exam. And so the clock will be following uh, automatically which students have to turn in their, uh, their exams. So that's a quite uh, a big help for uh, the people that uh, do the proctoring in, uh, in this examination center. Um, what we also have in uh, Square that is built in is that um, every exam that has been taken is logged, uh, of course, that's, that's quite logically, logically but um, uh, more important is that uh, there's a, a version management system built in. So if a student should fail for an examination and he has to take it again, uh, let's say uh, in August or, or we don't know when, um, the software will be checking, okay, the first time the student took this, uh, this course, this exam, we have given him uh, version 2, let's say. So next time he takes this exam, um, there is no way that he can get version 2 again. He will get version 6 or version 12 or um, any, any version that is available. Um, so the, the, the software lets the, the teachers um, upload their exam versions if ever there's a version needed because um, well, a student takes it for the second time and there's only a version available that he's already taken, then uh, Square will email this uh, teacher, will uh, ask him to upload a new version uh, by a certain date, a certain time. Um, that is, in, in short, what uh, Square is doing for us. So we have the seating plan, we have uh, the, the intelligence not to place students with the same exam on uh, places uh, which are one near another, and uh, of course uh, the, the version management. We also get the, the assignments that are posted, uh, that are turned in by our students, and uh, we get the possibility as a teacher to uh, give some feedback. I'll give the floor back to Hendrik, who will now show a second tool uh, being idiomatic assessment queue. Okay, thank you. Are we all still there? Um, okay, I'll try to uh, tell you something about uh, idiomatic. Um, maybe I'll try to go back to uh, first to I don't know where I need to. Okay, I go back to the PowerPoint. Yeah, okay. So here, idiomatic assessment queue. Uh, it was said earlier, uh, idiomatic is the old name of the tool. Assessment queue is the new uh, name because they are re rebuilding the system uh, with a lot of new tools, but it's all, uh, also more uh, improved too. Uh, first of all, just like other systems um, to um, to give digital exercise to teachers, uh, Idiomatic is an online uh, system where you can uh, build uh, as a teacher a database with all uh, sorts of exercises, feedback possibilities and so on. Um, there's a possibility of a various range from about 20 uh, different question types, uh, of course um, the logical ones like multiple choice and so on, but there are some uh, powerful question types too that I would like to show you uh, later on. Um, so next to uh, a database where you can put uh, exercises in, uh, you can make from those databases uh, assessments, exams uh, that are being generated by the system. Um, and uh, you've seen it earlier in Square, uh, a student has the possibility, uh, for instance, to choose between a uh, hundred or more different moments in a year to take one specific exam. So for the teacher, uh, it's very important that uh, he, he will be uh, able to generate more uh, equivalent uh, versions of a specific exam. 
So when he built a scenario, a predefined scenario in idiomatic in assessment queue, the system can generate an exam based on that scenario. That can be, for instance, uh, give me three uh, exercises from that folder to from that folder and so on. Um, secondly, um, the online assessment, of course, um, results in some reports of the uh, exam results, so you can make your exam better, uh, as, 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 as we can speak. Uh, maybe there's a question that wasn't very good, uh, so we can uh, uh, update the question uh, for the next time. But uh, what's also been uh, created last year is that uh, there's a um, link between Square and Proctor exams. Proctor is for later on, but there's a, a, a link between, a connection between those systems. Now when a student um, um, subscribes for a specific exam on a specific day, on a specific moment, and it's a digital exam that has been made up in uh, assessment queue, there will be automatically uh, uh, being scheduled an exam in idiomatic for that student. So there is no teacher that needs to uh, plan a moment for the student. Uh, the system, you know, by the connection between the system, um, does it automatically. So I'll show you uh, idiomatic and I'll show you uh, idiomatic from the side of a student. So I go back to uh, the next uh, and I uh, start sharing my screen. Not hear you. I don't know if something. In fact, I think we lost connection. Or oh, Andrik actually uh, seems to have lost connection. In the meantime, I can, yes, it, it will be back shortly. Uh, in the meantime, I can uh, start uh, announcing. Um, first of all, as I was saying, the, the conference in Bruges where I hope you all will be, uh, that, that you all, I hope you will be attending. Uh, during the conference, we are going to have uh, um, a workshop uh, devoted to uh, the possibility for different groups uh, to uh, interact. Here is uh, the slide. Uh, introducing our conference in Bruges, to be held in Bruges in June 16-19. And the title, Connecting Through Educational Technology. So being that uh, the, the, the title, but, you know, it is very consistent with what we are going to do uh, during the conference as an app, as a network for academics and professionals. Uh, we're going to offer a devoted uh, uh, workshop um, where different groups from different uh, institutions, from different countries will have the opportunity to meet, actually, to introduce their own uh, work, their own research interests. Um, we <clears throat> uh, will uh, organize the, uh, the meeting uh, as a, a sort of speed dating uh, event. Uh, so every group will have the opportunity to meet with other different groups, different research interests and find connections and find the possibility uh, to uh, start new researchers, new um, developments that maybe could uh, uh, hand in uh, um, a further uh, presentation uh, in the next uh, uh, Eden um, 
conferences, uh, events uh, scheduled for, for the following um, uh, time. Now, I don't know what happened to Hendrik uh, and uh, um, the Vives uh, group. Maybe uh, the Secretariat can, can help me. Uh, but something might have happened with, uh, um, with their connection, I think, because they, our own is working perfectly. So uh, I don't know if Christina can give me any information. I have seen that there is uh, also um, mm, there is uh, there are some questions there. There are some questions there. The, um, they are related to the kind of uh, uh, assess, um, assessment items um, that are uh, used in the system presented by, by the Vives colleagues. And when they are back, we are going to ask them. Uh, as a group in Rome as well, we, we are working on assessment and actually uh, technologically supported assessment, which is a major issue, um, not only um, for, um, you know, um, reliability um, considerations, uh, but also for, for validity consideration. We, we, don't, um, we don't have uh, uh, such uh, technological developments as regards open-ended questions, and this is, uh, this is a major issue, especially in um, such um, a high level uh, teaching and learning um, environment like I am um, the one we we, we deal with uh, at a university uh, there are some some skills that needs to be uh, developed uh, needs to be supported that are um, not uh, assessed or actually that might not be assessed uh, through um, closed, only closed uh, items. And that's why uh, open-ended questions are, are, are needed, especially uh, while you, uh, you want to um, you want to develop uh, um, cross-sectional skills like uh, um, critical thinking or other um, other skills like, uh, for instance, uh, um, argumentation and and so on and so forth. Um, what we we can do now in the meantime, uh, while uh, our colleagues from Vivas will co be connected again, is to try to. Um, have a, a little uh, discussion among participants uh, related to um, your normal uh, way of assessment. What kind of exam system do you use uh, in, your, in your environment? Do you use only um, closed items? Which kind of items do you use? Which kind of uh, of, of platforms are uh, the environments that that you that you use normally. Let's see if any of you want to give us, uh, this, you know, um, contribution related to these uh, aspects. Marielle is saying that we are still very traditional, paper-based, only paper-based. 
So in our um, in our university, especially in the department where where I'm working, which is the department of uh, education, where in Roma Tre University in Rome, we having lots of students actually in our department we have more than 6000 uh, students uh, we have actually to work on uh, computer based uh, assessment um, because uh, of course of these large large numbers and we we used to to have a paper based system but then we had to skip to the computer-based one in order to, to solve the issue of, you know, the numbers, the huge numbers we have. And, uh, of course, the issue also of uh, actually um, marking, um, marking uh, of course, um, exams. I see, uh, Natasha, you use uh, Moodle uh, as a, the same platform we are using in our university. I think it is widespread. Uh, the only problem, as I was saying, that we wish we could overcome is to find an automatic system for open-ended questions, which is still far from um, being uh, available we are trying to work on research on that so if you wish to participate in some researches to gain to reach uh, this um, the same please let me know because we we would like to start new projects on automatic assessment uh, in open-ended questioning um, mm, so again traditional um, paper-based, the assessment marking of the paper-based examination. Yes, this is a good question. I think they, they, they read and mark the papers. Am I right? By hard work, in <laughs> fact. <laughs> that is truly hard work. That is why we, we skip to, to computer-based, actually, uh, until last year we had, um, you know, a sort of uh, um, uh, medium uh, uh, size automatic uh, assessment using paper-based and a uh, machine that was reading automatically, automatically the papers. I don't know if you have the same, Marielle. I don't know what happened to our colleagues in Vives because they are not answering. Yes, Marielle, I was asking if you, um, what do you do when you collect the paper-based uh, um, uh, exams? Do you use a system to read the paper based or you just mark it with, uh, uh, you know, human raters? Marielle is typing. Ah, uh, so computer for, for, Scrap cards, okay. Computer format question. Open questions by real people. Ah, ah, in fact, in fact, that that is the issue. The 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 the, the problem of uh, open-ended questions is. Uh, a major one. We, as I said, we are trying to develop an automatic. Uh, I see it's very, very time com consuming. Um, we are trying, as I was saying. But if we meet in in Bruges, and hopefully we will on the workshop I was telling you, uh, devoted to to 
interaction, communication, exchange of ideas, we will have uh, surely the time to introduce you to what we are doing in our department to develop um, a system, uh, an automatic system to, to assess open-ended uh, questions. It is very difficult because it is almost impossible to replicate uh, the human brain, but there are already some, some levels of uh, uh, possibility um, <clears throat> at least to, to reach certain, uh, certain objectives. Um, it will be uh, interesting to have uh, an interaction on that uh, in, in, in the room. Oh, so maybe, some, maybe they are back. But anyway, this was a good opportunity to have this exchange on assessment, open-ended questions, and, uh, um, you know, common sharing of... Uh, of ideas on the possibilities of development in, in automatic assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, a question. Yes. So here you are, Hendrik, you're back, finally. <laughs> you, we, we okay, please. Uh, uh, have you seen... Um, no worry, no worry, it happens, it happens. Have you seen the idiomatic tool then, the question types or not? Have you seen everything? Or not? If you start from there, if you start from there, it's good. Ah, okay. From the questions. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll go right on. So I go here. Yeah. Okay. Kuhn will enter the room too, so uh, to check if we're still online or not. Um, so actually, I go back. Um, I just go very fast to the questions. Uh, because so this is the environment uh, idiomatic where we can set up different questions um, and a lot of questions a lot of sorry okay a lot of questions are uh, very known also in other systems you have questions like multiple choices like this one so uh, where you just answer one right question uh, and the system can give feedback, give correction if you want to ask to. Of course, in an exam, those buttons uh, will be invisible, uh, of course. Um, but uh, I'll show you around eight questions, very fast question types, but there are about 20 different question types. Uh, but I'll show you some that I think in other systems are not already uh, there or not uh, in that quite of... Um, quite a manner uh, like an idiomatic. Uh, a new uh, question type, you see I, I just reset the question, is uh, drag and drop in a column, uh, like for instance uh, you have some uh, sentences and they need to be dropped in the right column, uh, for instance will your system come tomorrow, that's a, a questioning sentence, so I drag it here, uh, tomorrow and then sit still is a commanding sentence and then I can check, okay, that's correct. So, so far so good, um, not a very new, I suppose. Also drop down in text like this, uh, so you can choose the right answer from a drop down. Also in other systems, you see those kinds of uh, question types. Uh, this one is a question type where you have to uh, answer, uh, where multiple uh, answers can be right. So for instance, in which countries is the euro used to pay? In Portugal, Portugal, Slovenia and Austria we do, so uh, I can correct like this. So that's very simple. As you see above, I can flag a question. When I, I think as a student that the question is quite difficult, I can flag it. So uh, I see in the menu that that's a question I need to, um, to look at at the end of the exam, uh, maybe uh, to check if, if I'm certain uh, that it's correct or not. Um, then this one is, is quite a beautiful one, I guess, a crossword. In some other systems you have that too, but uh, actually when you click, for instance, on capital of Latvia, it will show where, uh, where you need to answer. So in this case, uh, it's uh, Riga, then capital of Turkey, okay, and I can just type and uh, the system fills in uh, all the letters. Um, Croatia, that would be Zagreb, so we see that in four, capital of Belgium, uh, that's 
Brussels, and so on. I'm uh, fill in the last one, capital of Belarus is Minsk. Uh, so, and you can, uh, every letter can have a specific score, but you can also um, make one word a specific score. In this case, when I correct, you see, I get six out of six, I get the six, uh, uh, oh, it should be five out of five. I don't know why it's uh, mentioned at six. Uh, I don't know, that would be a fault from uh, that I made uh, while I set up the question before. Um, so that's a crossword you can add. Now this is uh, something that um, our teachers, uh, our uh, language teachers have asked to create those uh, question types. Actually, when you get a text, in this case, I have two sentences, and I would like to know if the students can uh, indicate all the adjectives in the text, all the nouns, all the personal pronouns, and so on. Uh, it would be uh, great if we can do that by marking the text of those words uh, in the text. You can uh, work to a maximum of five categories in each question. So in this case, we have three. And now as a student, if I want to mark all the personal pronouns, I just click on the marking uh, button, and then I can mark every uh, word that is a personal pronoun, uh, every noun, I can also double click as you see, uh, and then adjective, I can like this, and then I can ask for the correction, and you see I get three out of three. In this case, uh, we made one point for each category, but you can also give one point to each word that, uh, word that has been marked. So those are uh, things that are very powerful, I guess, and that I personally haven't seen in other systems uh, right now. Uh, so marking the right uh, words. Uh, another one is uh, the possibility for the student to answer with a, a specific mathematical symbol or structure. Um, you see now the teacher has only uh, given the possibility to answer with a fraction. But there are several possibilities, like uh, difficult ones, like integrals, uh, integrals and some uh, other structures like this. So when a uh, student need to answer this um, um, formula, this uh, uh, addition, so um, he can click the, uh, the button over here and then click on the structure to open the numerator and the denominator, and then he can fill the right uh, numbers in the cells. The system can check, and that's correct. So those are also possibilities uh, in idiomatic um, to uh, create your questions with. And the last one I want to show is uh, the one that also has been made, um, uh, that had been asked by a teacher uh, uh, geography uh, who wants to be able to um, I just reset the question uh, who, who wants to be able to have a question type that I can uh, drop uh, text on a map but in that way that um, it is uh, being uh, handled very uh, correctly in this case for instance Lys is a river in Belgium and that's the river over here, you see, that's, that's the one. In a lot of systems where you have drag and drop, or when you have uh, hotspot uh, questions, um, the problem is that around the river, you need to uh, make a rectangle like this, so where the whole river is in the rectangle. But when a student places the word over here, it's still in the rectangle, but it's way too far from the river to be uh, marked as correct. So uh, we have been able to, to, to let that question be made. Uh, and then uh, I, can, uh, I can show it. So this is over here. Bruges is, of course, the city where um, the Eden Conference will be in June. So it's at the north of our province. Uh, Liège is a town over here. The Kempen, that's a region in the northern of Belgium, and Lisse is also a river, but over here. So when I ask for the correction, it will be uh, set as correct. Uh, but I do otherwise. I place Bruges right, I place Kempen right, Lesse also, Liège also, but Lisse, I will place it over here. And if I do the correction, you'll see that this one is being set as incorrect. 
uh, I can view the solution uh, where this so should be uh, placed, should be being placed. Okay, that's how the question is shown for the students. I'll show you right now how a teacher can make those question type, and you see it over here. He can make uh, what we call drop zone on the image, uh, and over here you see that the drop zone uh, is a polygon around the right answer, so you can be more specific in working with images. Sorry for the fast uh, explanation. I'll let word now, if it's okay, to uh, Kuhn that can tell the last thing about Proctor exam. Okay. Mm, there we go. I'll get back to the slide first. Oh, I am right here. And now, move it on play. Help me out, page it. Yeah, stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. So, sharing one here. Okay, so now we're back and we'll take our last slide. Um, along with the, the startup of our examination center in 2014, um, we were also looking, looking into systems to, to be able to organize exams on distance, remotely, um, as we call them. Um, and after searching and, and comparing a lot of tools, um, we've uh, ended our search with a Proctor exam, the, the Dutch uh, enterprise that um, has become a, a bigger player during the years. Uh, we've met the people of Proctor exam when they were very, very small. They were just a startup with a, a one or two persons that, uh, that were involved. Um, how did we come up with a Proctor exam or why? Specifically, did we choose uh, at the end for a proctor exam? Um, in 2014, when we started our search, um, in fact, proctor exam was the only European um, enterprise because there were a lot of American players, but um, given the, the data protection laws, etc., um, we felt more com comfortable with um, a European enterprise. So uh, they were the only um, enterprise who used. Uh, two cameras, not only the frontal webcam that's built in, in the computer, but also um, using an app on, um, on a smart device, smartphone or, or uh, iPad or something like that, um, to have a second view, to be able to create a 360 degree view of the room where a, a student is uh, taking his exam. So um, we've come up with Proctor exam. We are now about four, four years uh, later. And so far, uh, 4,000 students uh, or 4,000 exams have been taken remotely. So um, we, we see that this uh, number is growing during the years. Um, I'll explain in short uh, what the procedure is, uh, is like. So uh, a student first goes to Square, which uh, I've shown in... Um, uh, a short time ago, uh, where they uh, register for an exam. They don't choose the exam center as a location, but they'll choose the remote uh, possibility, where they can choose um, a day and a, and a time to take their exam. Um, and the advantage is that Proctor exam is directly linked to a Square. So if a student registers for an exam remotely, uh, immediately the exam is being planned in uh, Proctor exam, uh, together with automatically planned in Edumatic or Assessment Q if it's a, an Assessment Q exam. Um, so there are very few, very little mistakes that are being made uh, in the planning. Uh, nobody has to uh, make a planning manually, no, no, uh, no teachers, so um, that works quite well. Um, once the exam is being planned in Proctor exam, the student first, first will get a, an email um, asking him to take a, a technical test. Um, so what is being tested? First of all, the, the screen sharing. Um, does that work? Uh, does the microphone in his computer um, work and, and register any, any signs? Any sounds, excuse me. Um, do the speakers work? Um, does the webcam uh, work uh, is the internet connection uh, strong enough very important and last but not least um, a student will be asked to test whether the the app of proctor exam on his phone or smart device um, is working and is able to send uh, video footage through the exam so um, 
if that test goes wrong, if something doesn't work, the people of Proctor exam will help our student. Um, if the test is being uh, being easy and it, and everything works, the student will get a second email from Proctor exam with the link to the actual exam. Um, that exam is um, is of course only available on the moment that the student has uh, signed up for. That's uh, that's quite logical. Um, at the start of the exam, there's a whole starting procedure. Student will first be asked to um, start screen sharing. He has to check if the webcam works. He will have to make sure the microphone work, works, uh, the speakers work. He will be asked to start up the app of Proctor Exam on the smart device, phone or uh, something else, tablet. And then uh, a whole procedure is, uh, is being started. First of all, with the smart device, the student will have to show, with the, using the camera of the smart device, uh, the the environment of the computer, what's behind the computer, what next to the computer, uh, how is the desk organized. He will be asked to show the the bottom of the table to to see if there are, there aren't any uh, papers that are being being held there. Uh, he will be asked to show the the ceiling, all the corners of the room, the entire room. He will be asked to to take a close up with his uh, smart device of the ears. Isn't there any Bluetooth connection that is hidden within the ears, uh, behind the, the hair somewhere? Um, so um, all that is being checked, and if this uh, startup procedure is being uh, processed, the student can start his exam. During the exam, he will be asked to place the smartphone or uh, tablet behind him so that we have a 360-degree view on the room where he takes the exam. Um, all images, all footage, so we have a lot of footage uh, on that moment. The footage from the uh, smart device, footage from the frontal webcam uh, of the computer, the footage of what is happening on the screen, the screen sharing, the, the recording of the microphone, all that is being recorded, is being saved. So at the moment of the exam, there is nobody on the other side looking if the student isn't cheating. Yeah. So everything is being recorded and reviewed afterwards. Um, right now this happens by the people of Proctor exam, after an exam is, uh, has been taken. Um, in the near future this will be done, this uh, reviewing work, uh, based on artific artificial intelligence. So uh, in the near future this will change and um, we will um, be able to uh, to to have artificial intelligence uh, checking the images for us. So that will uh, be um, a big change during next school year. Um, if we ask students um, why do they take exams remotely, the, the most logical answer is that uh, they don't have to make any um, traveling uh, to, to, to come and take an exam. They don't have to take the car or the train or uh, anything to, to come to the exam center, so that's a great advantage, of course, they have the freedom of, of space where they take uh, the exam. Um, what uh, is also um, quite helpful is that nobody has to be uh, searching for a parking space nearby, because that's a huge problem here uh, in, on our campus. Um, in addition, a student doesn't have to be stressed out looking for in what room he has to go to, uh, to take his, uh, his exam. Uh, and so on and so on. But most of all, and that's what uh, I'll tell as a last, I, uh, I will be, be stopping the presentation in here, um, is that the students uh, mainly name as a, as a great advantage the fact that they're taking the exam in their own very, very um, uh, familiar environment. So they're behind their kitchen table or, or in their sofa to take the exam. Uh, they don't get any... Um, any sounds or, or noises from other students being uh, around them in, in the same exam room. And that's uh, really, really something that, uh, that's a great advantage. Uh, so, uh, so strong even that we have students that live uh, only 10 kilometers away from uh, the exam center, but that take all their exams from home. And I think we will end this here. If that is okay, I suppose there will be perhaps some questions. I'm looking. All 
Are there any questions? I have to look in the chat screen, I suppose. Um, I saw one question pass yes, here. Yes, um, uh, I wanted to thank you, Andrik, first of all. And all the comments are very pos positive and people really much impressed with what you're doing. I have a first, a first question. I don't know. I think we don't have so much time because we had that break and so uh, we have just a very few uh, minutes. I would say a couple of minutes just to, to have these questions on. And it's related to what you were mentioning regarding um, um, artificial intelligence. Uh, because I, what I was telling everyone while we had that uh, first break was that uh, in Rome we are, we are trying to develop a, a system, an automatic system for open-ended questions. And so using artificial intelligence, of course. Um, I know it's, it's a difficult issue and I wanted to know more from you in which can, which is your direction in this sense. Can you tell us more? Is this about the, the exams that are being yeah. taken remotely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I yeah. understand that yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. So uh, right now we have... Um, uh, the, the Dutch enterprise, um, Proctor Exam, that uh, is doing the review work for us. Um, so uh, they're doing this. And uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's normal people that do uh, that job. So uh, a Proctor reviewer will uh, be watching eight exams um, simultaneously. Um, and those eight exams, where he sees all the feeds, both the, the webcam feed, the, the smartphone feed, the screen capture feed um, will be played at a, at a higher speed, of course. Uh, so um, that's quite a lot of information for one human being to, to process. So um, very soon artificial intelligence will be taking this over. And uh, what's very important is that um, the eye movement will be monitored, um, the typing behavior, um, the speed and behavior of, uh, of how the the letters are being typed um, will be monitored, as well as head movements. If a, a student uh, flips the head uh, in, in any direction um, a lot, that, that will be uh, marked as being perhaps suspicious. But uh, much more than this, I, I can't tell uh, you at this moment. I'm waiting quite, quite soon to get a full demo of uh, what the artificial intelligence is going to change within Proctor Exam pr platform. And I really hope we'll have uh, the chance to talk about it during the, the Bruges conference, uh, as I was telling before. So I think, uh, mm, yes, Marielle is mentioning, uh, have you considered plagiarism when taking exams at a distance? But I think you already answered. But anyway, if you want to add something regarding this point, and then we'll have to to hand our, our um, webinar. Uh, please, Andrik, if you... But it is for you, for Plagiati, this is also here from... We didn't really get the question. You, you, we've lost connection, I think, for, for a, a short The question was moment. related to plagiarism. If you have considered the issue of plagiarism when you deal with exams at the distance. Turn it in up to me. Yeah, there is a tool. Turn it in in the assign in the uh, learning environment Toledo that we can use for that, but. Um, that, that's, I guess, for papers or something like that. Uh, yeah. I suppose you mean, no? For papers, plagiarism? In fact, in fact I know, Tantin, we, we actually uh, had the chance to, to, to use it, of course, of course. So, but anyway, it's, it's um, uh, an issue that, that needs to be discussed. Uh, 
uh, further and so I really hope we'll have uh, the opportunity to do it uh, when we meet in, in Bruges. I thank you so much for being with us. Also, um, uh, thank you for for having the opportunity to come back after the the the, the forced break with uh, the connection with this program with the connection. And I, uh, of course, I apologize with all the attendees. Uh, I can, I don't know if um, Christina can help me with that slide related to the next uh, opportunity to have uh, uh, a webinar, an Eden app uh, webinar together. The date uh, is April the 3rd, so please uh, do not miss it. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, Chris, uh, exactly, so it's not a slide, but it's uh, uh, an advertisement that you can read here in, in the NAP area. And anyway, it will be uh, advertised on uh, the Eden website. On the Eden website, you can already find all the program for this uh, term. Uh, you will also have the opportunity, if you are on Twitter tonight at 6, uh, to have another, uh, you know, opportunity for interaction with uh, Palita Edirisenga uh, from uh, the Leicester University UK uh, Department of Education, who will be uh, chatting with us regarding digital skills. So I really hope you will be on Twitter later, you know, less than two hours, actually less than one hour. And I hope to meet you all back uh, and please disseminate our events with your colleagues um, and we'll meet on April the 3rd on our next um, webinar. Thank you for being with us. Thank you all. Bye-bye.